students, welcome to CVSC and CRT Solutions by Vedantu. As you know, last class we faced a small technical issue because of which the video got stopped or the live got stopped. So today we are going to continue from there. And those students who are new to this channel, let me tell you, we are doing NCRT line by line of each chapters of your 11th as well as 12th. Now, NCRT line by line is a method where we read every single line of NCRT and explain you the concept. This way you will be prepared for your boards as well as your competitive exams. So last class I had done. Uh, polyphora, cilantrata, and tenophora, three phylums, and some basic terms like coelom, diploblastic, triploblastic, segmentation, digestion, all these general terms which we are going to come across in this chapter was done last class. Today we are going to continue animal kingdom from where we stopped. Okay, where we stopped, we are going to continue animal kingdom. That is, you will, uh, we are going to start from uh, platyhelminthes. Okay, so let's directly dive into the video. Students, platyhelminthes means what? Flat worms, okay? Flat, flat, think like this. So, platyhelminthes are flat worms, okay? Flat, sorry, one second. They are flat worms, and flat worms means what? They are dorso ventrally flattened. Okay, dorso ventrally flattened. So let's see which other characteristics that they are mentioning here. See, they have dorso ventrally flattened body, hence are called flat worms. These are mostly endoparasite. What is the meaning of endoparasite? We did not come across this word before. So I'll be writing the meaning of this word. Endoparasite means endo means anything that is inside. Okay, anything that is inside. Now, when I taught you biological classification, also we spoke about endospores. That means what? It is inside something. So, same way, endoparasite means it is inside the host. It will be present inside the host body. Okay, and they are mostly, they are not telling that everything is an endoparasite. They are trying to say that uh, most of them are endoparasites which are found in animals including human beings. So, you are going to get to know about a worm that was staying inside your body or is right now also maybe in your body. Okay, so that is what flat worms are bilaterally symmetrical we already understood what is bilateral symmetry and radial symmetry bilateral symmetry means i'll be only able to cut them in just one plane if i cut them in that one plane i'll be able to get two equal halves otherwise i will not be able to get two equal halves now next word was triploblastic triploblastic means they have three germ layers and all the three germ layers are that be it ectoderm endoderm or mesoderm then we have a coelomate that means they do not have coelom they do not have a cavity which is lined by by mesoderm and animals with organ level of organization so we are slowly evolving from we had polyphera which was cellular level of organization then we slowly came to tissue level of organization from tissue right now we are at organ level of organization now students because they are parasites the most important character that they need to hold is to have hooks and suckers yes or no if i need to hold on to another think okay now a wall or a bottle or something i i hold it like this that means what i'm hooking on to it same way if this um flat worm has to stay in the intestine of humans or in the animals they should have a hook that will let them stay there and they should have a sucker to take all the nutrients from the host okay if they do not take all the nutrients from the host then how are they going to survive they are parasites they need to survive on the nutrients that is given by the host so hooks and suckers are present in the parasitic forms some of them absorb nutrients from the host directly through their body surface okay some of them absorb nutrients from the host directly from their body surface specialized cells called flame cells okay very important helps in osmoregulation that is for excretion as well as for osmoregulation they have a specialized cells called flame cells now sexes are not separate fertilization is internal development is through many larval states not one larval state many larval states some members like planaria possesses regeneration capacity i had shared one video also on my telegram previously about showing how planaria does regeneration so student this is how your planaria will look like okay this is how your planaria will look like like this okay now i cut any portion of the planaria be it this portion be it this portion the planaria will be able to uh, you know regrow or do regeneration completely okay which is one of the specialized characteristics of planaria 
now examples are uh, tinea and fasciculola now tapeworm okay tinea solium is the tapeworm which is present in the intestine of humans and this is the reason why we get abdominal pain sometimes okay it, it could be because we had a lot of junk or our gut is not clean that these parasites enter into our body and tinea solium uh, is called uh, the simple word is called tapeworm now fasciculola fasciola is another term for liver fluke okay again liver fluke all of you uh, i don't know how many of you have seen liver fluke uh, is like this fully flat okay fully flat like this structure okay liver fluke is the structure like this now these are completely dorsoventrally flattened see look here this is tinea solium this is the tapeworm that will be there in our body and we do have worm tablets for this right we do have worm tablet for this and we will get rid of this worm now this is your liver fluke can you see how they are completely flat okay completely flat so in platy helminthes the main thing that you need to remember is that they are completely flat worms so i'm writing it here flat worms flat worms that is they are not just flattened from somewhere they are dorso ventrally flattened okay dorso ventrally flattened the next most important thing about these people they are endoparasites most of them are endoparasites and next thing is they have hooks and suckers hooks and suckers okay these hooks and suckers let them to be in the host body and they will absorb the nutrients directly or with the help of hook and suckers okay now uh, they are flat worms understood endoparasite they have hook and suckers then what do they have students uh, see understand that they are completely what to tell they are completely dependent on the host for anything like for survival they have they have to have a host for survival okay now fertilization fertilization is internal is internal development happens with many larval stage okay development happens with many larval stage many larval stage examples especially you have to remember planaria because planaria has good regeneration capacity okay regeneration capacity very important okay very very important next example is going to be tinea solium if you cannot remember this at least remember tapeworm okay and liver fluke fasciola liver fluke these are the only things that you have to remember let's just check if we have missed some terms hook sense occurs asymmetrical bilateral that i'm not writing okay those are general thing yes we forgot about flame cells okay we forgot about flame cells we cannot forget about flame cells flame cells are going to help so flame cells actually you will study again in the excretion chapter as well okay excretion chapter as well you're going to study flame cells so you'll not have to take tension about it one second students i'll just uh, get the specs yes so here you should remember that these people have flame cells okay flame cells that helps them with osmoregulation that is salt and water balance osmoregulation means what salt and water balance in my body salt and water balance in my body okay salt and water balance in my body so platy helminthes means flat worms they are dorso ventrally flattened they are endoparasites they have hooks and suckers to hold on to the host fertilization is internal development many larval stages are there planaria regeneration capacity high regeneration capacity and flame cells does osmo regulation where the salt and water balance will be maintained now examples you will remember tinea and fasciola or uh, tapeworm and liver fluke i hope that was clear next is going to be the topic is going to be ascalminthes okay ascalminthes ascalminthes one second students Ascalminthes are not round so sorry ascalminthes are not flat worms they are round worms okay from the term itself you should be able to understand they are round worms okay round worms yes they are round worms and uh, I hope reflection is not coming. Yes, ascalminthes are round worms. That's the first thing you will remember. Round worms. 
so one flat worm we saw one round worm we are going to see so here what is going to happen the body of ascalminthus is circular okay in cross section hence the name round worm comes that is if i draw a worm okay let's say this is the worm okay this is the worm now if i cut let's say this is the head of the worm if i cut the worm right if i cut the worm how am i going to get i am going to get a proper circular layer yes i'm going to get a proper circular layer so obviously this are because of this is why we call it round one okay because of this we call it round one now next thing students see uh, they may be free living aquatic and terrestrial or parasitic in plants and animals roundworms have organ system level of organization okay they we have come from till plate helminthus it was again organ level organization now here we have come to organ system level of body okay they are bilaterally symmetrical even these people were bilaterally symmetrical they were also triploblastic but they were acelomate so acelomate plate helminthus but remember that the only phylum that is pseudo coelomate that means the mesoderms are in the form of pouches i have already mentioned no in last class that the mesoderm is in the form of pouches instead of lining that entire cavity they have formed into pouches so when they form into pouches we call them pseudo coelomate pseudo coelomate pseudo coelomate pseudo means false okay pseudo coelomate animals Elementary canal is complete with a well developed muscular pharynx and excretory tube removes the body waste from the body cavity through an excretory pore so here they are trying to say elementary canal canal is complete because they have proper pharynx and now elementary canal is complete means they will have a mouth and anus as well proper openings will be there we have already spoke that when it comes to incomplete digestion there is always going to be only one opening but here they are telling elementary canal is complete so that means there is mouth anus at the same time there is also a funnel shaped structure called as pharynx okay funnel shaped structure called as pharynx now the next thing they are telling is excretion right excretion is happening through, through a tube okay they are telling excretion is happening through a through tube okay and the tube properly has a opening as well here okay the tube has a opening as well and that uh, opening will be called as excretory pore excretory pore the opening is called as excretory pore now an excretory tube removes body waste from the body cavity through an excretory pore sexes are separate that is they are dioecious that is males and females are distinct often males females are longer than males so if you see worm okay the ascaris worm is the example here you will i'll show you the diagram you will notice that the females have a longer structure like this okay they are longer like this like this longer okay longer than uh, males fertilization is internal development may be direct the young ones resembles the adult or indirect so that means they can have fertilization is internal but development may be direct or indirect that is they might resemble like the adults or they might have in larval stage okay now examples you are going to remember is ascaris that is round worm vucheria which is a filarial worm that causes vucheria bancrofti causes elephantiasis okay it is a disease that you will be learning in human health and disease chapter okay now look at the uh, let's write what we understood so far okay let's write what we understood so far so ask okay, one second yes ascalminthus okay ascalminthus is round over Ascalminthus is round worm. Now, why they round worm? Because when you cut them, you get an exact round worm. These are pseudo coelomate. Okay, pseudo coelomate. Very very important. Pseudo coelomate means they have false seal. Okay, false seal. Yes so no? False seal on they have. Next thing we know about them that they are elementary canal. I am writing only specialized characters. because uh, no point of writing the same thing again and again, again about triploblastic and all of that that is you have to make a box where you write about about each phylum okay if you write about each phylum then that problem will not come at all okay problem will not come at all elementary canal is complete with muscular pharynx okay muscular pharynx so this is the thing next thing they have excretion okay excretion 
is happening with the help of a tube okay excretion is happening with the help of a tube and that tube will have an excretory pore okay tube will have an excretory pore through which the waste materials will come out as well then about ascalminthus now you know ascaris right ascaris so here what is going to be females are going to be longer females will be longer than males example you are going to remember ascariasis okay ascaris uh, sorry butcheria butcheria at least remember this too and cyclostoma if you can remember that also you can remember that is hookworm okay hookworm now we will move to next one that is phylum annelida i hope so far we are good to go okay we are taking very less time for each phylum right that is only uh, you have to remember the specialized character so look here they may be aquatic or terrestrial free living sometimes parasitic as well they exhibit organ system level of body okay they have organ system level of body now organization and bilaterally symmetrical now they are triploblastic metamerically segmented this is a very very important concept why i'll tell you because if you have all seen an earthworm okay i'm going to draw an earthworm yeah look at this this is a okay this is an earthworm now if you have seen earthworm you will see start seeing proper segmentation right like this segmentation you will see throughout the earthworm now why do you see that that is because they are segmented animals right they are segmented animals now these segments are called as metameric segments okay metamerically segmented that is inside also internal structures also might be segmented metamerically segmented and coelomate animals that means they have proper coelom okay they do not have like uh, pseudo coelom or they are not a coelomate they are proper coelomate so from annelida you will notice that a lot of changes have been coming that they are becoming coelomate at the same time you will see that excretion they have paths so different different like modifications you can start seeing okay now they are um, and coelomate animals their body surface is distinctively marked into segments or metameres and hence the phylum name called annelida came that is little rings so we can call the each, this each segment now i take this segment okay i take this segment i can either call this segment uh, color is one problem yeah i will either call this segment metamer okay or i will call it segments okay so they are telling that this each portions can be called as little rings like this okay little rings ring like structures got it they possess longitudinal and circular muscles one second students so here you will understand that they possess longitudinal as well as circular muscle which help them for locomotion and if you have seen an earthworm move you will notice that the earthworm moves like this right they do a compression then a rare fraction a compression a rare fraction compression rare fraction so these movements are helpful because of the presence of longitudinal okay longitudinal and circular muscles okay longitudinal and circular muscles got it now they possess okay they possess longitudinal and circular muscles which help them in locomotion now aquatic annelids like nerysis possess lateral appendages very important the ones that are present aquatic okay in water they will have lateral appendages okay here lateral side they'll have appendages parapodia which helps them in swimming so lateral side they'll have like this parapodias which will help them in swimming okay, this will be present on the lateral appendages this will help them in swimming And now it looks like an earthworm okay right it looks like an earthworm that is moving so they have in aquatic aquatic organisms especially nerysis is given so this question only will come from a, a neat point of view and from both point of view aquatic nerysis they will have lateral lateral appendages lateral appendages that help them for movement as well as swimming now a closed circulatory system a closed circulatory system which help uh, okay a closed circulatory system 
is present nephridia helps in osmo regulation and excretion so i told you slowly development is happening right so nephridia has been developed that is nephridia is there to do osmo regulation and excretion before what was there before we had uh, as of now we have only spoke about flame cells right from flame cells we have not seen any uh, you know complicated structure like how we have it in humans so here you can see nephridia is there which is going to help in osmoregulation and excretion always remember even our excretory organs be it the kidney be it the ureter urinary bladder everything as an entire system helps in osmoregulation as well because they are such a big organ uh, system they cannot just do be, be doing only one task right so they also do osmoregulation that is salt water balance so nephridia helps in osmoregulation osmoregulation and excretion osmoregulation and excretion okay now neural system consists of paired ganglia so you can see you know how development has happened excretory system we saw now neural system also have paired ganglion a ganglion is like a set of nerves okay you can tell an aggregation of nerve can be a ganglion so a paired ganglion or ganglia is present that is connected by lateral nerves to double ventral nerve cord okay so they are attached laterally with the later help of lateral nerves they'll be attached to the double ventral nerve cord double ventral nerve cord double ventral nerve cord so nerysis and aquatic form is dioecious but earthworm and leeches are monoecious that is in nerysis the sexes are separate and both of them might have a distinct character but in earthworm and leeches they are monoecious and reproduction is going to be sexual okay so example is going to be nerysis ferritima is earthworm's name and hirudinaria is leech all of you would have gone near a waterfall no and near a waterfall definitely definitely you would have gotten bit by leech at least once or someone in your group would have got bit why is this happening because leech leeches drink blood and survive right they are parasite okay they are parasite but they are ectoparasite they are outside the body they are not getting inside the body they will just attack with but they also have hook and suckers okay that's why people tell never pluck a leech out because why they will leave that uh, the hook you no know, in our hands okay wherever they are biting they will just leave that hook there and that can get poisonous so that's why they tell you should slowly remove it by adding salt or something and just scoop it out like that because once they drink the whole blood and they are full they will actually drop by drop out by themselves like they'll fall down by themselves but sometime what happen out of panic seeing lot of blood loss because lot of blood will go after the leech has been removed also so seeing that people immediately if they see blood they will have a tendency to just pluck it out when they pluck it out what happens this hook you no know, which was hooked to the hand it, they will leave that hook there and go so that is a problem okay that is a problem hmm And the Leda's first point that you have to remember is that they are metamerically segmented. Okay, that is these metamerically segments. Okay, these metamerically segments. Can be called metamers. This metamerically segments can be called metamers. Next thing that you have to remember about them is that uh, they have nephridia. Okay, they have nephridia. and these nephridias help them with excretion help them with uh, excretion and osmoregulation at the same same time next thing that they have is they have longitudinal okay for doing that movement they have longitudinal and circular muscles longitudinal and circular muscles that help them for movement now in some aquatic forms okay some aquatic forms like nerysis okay nerysis what do they have they have lateral appendages okay they have 
lateral appendages now these lateral appendages do what this lateral appendages will help them for swimming okay lateral appendages will help them for swimming swimming now other than that what do we know we know that they have this is done they have paired ganglia yes or no paired ganglion or ganglia okay paired ganglion that are attached with the help okay attached with lateral nerves to where students to the double ventral nerve cord so here you are seeing nerve cord all those terms you are seeing no so here you can understand that anelida is not a simple fellow he is like a strong fellow he has got more development compared to others then example you will remember is going to be earthworm okay earthworm and leech is the two example you can remember now you have to remember there are other names as well okay this will be hidden area and this is ferritima because sometime what happen they usually give the scientific term they will be like write about ferritima or write the characteristics, specialized characteristics about ferritoma. So you can write the common characteristics of annelida itself because earthworm is now removed from the syllabus. But before earthworm was there, so they will usually not use the word earthworm. Got it? Yes. Okay. Next is phylum arthropoda. So now before I go to phylum arthropoda, you should remember one thing about arthro arthropoda is this is the largest phylum. Okay, largest phylum in the entire phylums is going to be arthropoda and these people have insects okay so insects you know there are so many types of insects known insects unknown insects a lot of them are there right so insects are widely spread everywhere okay widely widely spread everywhere so here, here this is the largest okay this is the largest phylum largest phylum and this includes insects this includes insects yes or no now uh, over two third of all named species on earth are arthropod they have organ system level of organization they are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic segmented and coelomates okay the coelomates started from annelida so now it's going to get carried away up to chordates okay now the body of arthropod is covered by chitinous exoskeleton and students this is one of the most important reasons why insect is spread all over the places okay whichever places you go wherever you go you would realize that insects are not getting extinct or there is no extension of these insects is because of one thing or to increase their survival rate the main reason is going to be chitinous exoskeleton okay chitinous exoskeleton have you all by mistake at least once touched a cockroach or you know by mistake uh, you know stamped on a cockroach you'll notice that in one stamp around nothing is going to happen to the cockroach whatever your body weight, weight may be nothing will happen to the cockroach why is this so it is because they have a proper exoskeleton covering and the chitin plates uh, there are plates also called sclerites which are covered on all the three sides okay lateral they have dorsal they have ventral they have so this way what happened by, by one kick and all nothing will happen to the cockroach okay so they are very strong or they are made in such a way that their survival rate is increased and that is the reason why it is the largest phylum and insects are everywhere now students if i look at the body the body is divided into head thorax and abdomen okay they have jointed appendages that is arthros means joint appendage me poda means appendages okay respiratory organs are which and all gills are there okay book gills are there book lungs or tracheal okay or tracheal system now circulatory system is of open type open type yesterday we explained that also open type means the blood is flowing into the sinuses okay now sensory organs they have like antenna eyes compound or simple eyes statocyst or balancing organ are present in them excretion may take place with the help of malpigian tubules very important excretion might take place with the help of malpigian tubules okay they are most dioecious mostly dioecious fertilization is usually 
usually internal they are mostly ov paras okay ov paras development may be direct or indirect okay they lay eggs they lay eggs students all of you would have seen cockroach egg see this is how the cockroach egg. i don't know in the maybe in the white it will not be seen so i'll draw it here in this cockroach egg, hair egg you would have seen somewhere just go check around your home if there is cockroach then the egg also will be there like this it will be there okay inside this utika and all that will be there which you will study again structural organization which i'll be taking up next so here it is oviparous development baby direct or indirect now examples economically important insects is going to be your honeybee silkworm lac insects which are giving some something vectors that is the carriers of disease are going to be anopheles culex and aedes mosquito anopheles mosquito causes your malaria culex elephantiasis aedes mosquito you'll be studying in chikungunya and dinghi okay now gregory's uh, pest is going to be locust and living fossil is going to be limulus or king crab now these are the things about your arthropoda so as i told you arthropoda's first thing that they have mentioned is that this is the largest phylum largest phylum largest phylum mainly because it includes okay it includes insects it includes insects okay that is the main reason why these people are the largest phylum and why like why what is the survival rate or why this has become the largest kingdom because of their chitinous chitinous exoskeleton okay chitinous exoskeleton now this chitinous exoskeleton makes them strong or for the survival as well now students arthropoda means jointed appendage so let's try to draw a cockroach okay with the cockroach this has become a combination of cockroach plus butterfly wait one second okay this yes this looks like a cockroach right this looks like a cockroach but is the brown visible okay here let's draw antenna okay and here they'll have a partition they'll have a partition like this they'll have a partition like this now cockroach body is divided into head okay head thorax and obviously the abdomen so even in arthropod also this is the same classification that you see where you have head thorax plus abdomen okay now in understand students these people are going to have jointed appendages now if i draw the cockroach leg it's going to be like this okay jointed appendages that is they are going to have portions like this one piece like this another piece like this okay another piece like this like this jointed appendages they are going to have so this jointed appendages is one of the specialized characteristics of your arthropoda which you would have studied in your smaller classes as well jointed appendages a jointed appendages so that is they have legs which are jointed each pieces are there now their excretion okay excretion happens with the help of malpighian tubules Okay, malpighian tubules they are see digestive system now in cockroach and all they have different structures like crop and gizzard it's not as developed as much but they still they have a proper system they have uh, proper esophagus pharynx now they we, we don't tell all those portions because they have four a fore gut mid gut hind gut they do not have that proper like how you see esophagus that proper divisions have not come but still they have small small portions which are there but they have malpighian tubule they have gastric ck to put the secretions and all of this okay so ex will happen with the help of malpighian tubules as well now jointed appendages is one of the most important characteristics so that you don't forget jointed appendages jointed appendages and skytaneous exoskeleton is one of the important characters now they have open circulatory system open circulatory system means what the blood is going to flow into the sinuses 
okay blood is going to flow into the sinuses open spaces are there now students depending on what they are going to do like are they beneficial to us or not we have categorization right economically profitable you have your honeybee uh, silkworm and lacworm okay honeybee Bombex. okay that is your silkworm and your lacworm okay lacworm now honeybee apis indica you can write now uh, same way if you if there are other things like vectors are there you can remember anophilus fulex and aedes mosquito then you can remember king uh, limulus okay king crab that is uh, going to be a living fossil so all this you can remember as general examples that comes under arthropod next is phylum mollusca mollusca is going to be the second largest phylum okay after an arthropoda second largest phylum is going to be mollusca that is the animal mollusca are terrestrial or aquatic marine or freshwater having an organ system level of organization they are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic and coelomate this is all general okay very general from previous one no much difference you will see body is covered by calcareous shells this is important Yes or no, body is covered by calcareous cell. There we had chitinous exoskeleton. So definitely it's a specialized character that they have calcareous. It means calcium filled shells. Okay, calcareous shells. Now, and it is unsegmented with a distant head, muscular food and visceral hump. So here the body division. Okay, here the body division is very, very different from what we learned. Head is there. Okay, ma'am. Muscular food. Okay muscular foot and visceral hump visceral hump now a soft and a spongy layer of skin forms a mantle over the visceral hump so there is going to be one layer formation okay so a soft and spongy layer a soft and spongy layer of skin forms a mantle okay this is the mantle mantle so mantle over the visceral hump okay mantle over the visceral hump now the space between the hump and the mantle is called as mantle cavity so the space no now let's say if i draw it into this one more layer i think it's going to be very difficult to draw like that okay wait one second students Let's say this is the visceral hump. Okay, visceral hump. On top of that, we have mantle cavity. Mantle, sorry, mantle. So this is going to be the hump. Visceral hump. And on top of that, we have mantle. Now between this, between the hump and the mantle cavity, there is a portion. No, sorry, between the mantle and the hump, there is a portion that will be called as cavity, mantle cavity. Always remember spaces will be called as cavity in our body, right? Same way. Mantle cavity in which the feather-like gills are present. So here they have feather-like gills present and they have respiratory and excretory function. The anterior head region has sensory tentacles, okay? So on the head we have sensory, okay, sensory tentacles. Sensory tentacles. Now the mouth contains a file like okay rasping organ or the feeding called as radula. This is very important. The mouth has a rasping organ called the radula. Now example students you can remember pi and octopus. Okay octopus. Now uh, <coughs> pila sorry pila and octopus. Now students remember that radula is very very important. Okay radula is very very important. That is a rasping organ which will be present at the tip of the mouth like this tip of the mouth there will be rasping organs. I don't know if I can show it on my phone. One second. Okay, one minute. I think radula we cannot see that well but we can try 
Adula and Molesca. Let's see if there are any images. Uh, very one small portion of stone students. Like one small. See like one uh, structure. Okay. This one if you see. This is your radula. Okay. This is the radula. Which you are going to see. I hope it is focused. That radula is present near the mouth. Okay. Present near the mouth. Now I have drawn a bigger structure. Now if I draw the structure which I am seeing here. It is looking like this. Okay. This is the mouth structure they have drawn. And like this it is taken. And the radula is here. Okay, radula is here. Like this. This is file like rasping organ. This rasping organ. Okay. File like rasping organ. Okay, file like rasping organ. Now, pila, the examples are going to be apple, apple's name. Okay, pearl oyster. Pearl oyster, all of you have seen, a no? lot of people do this uh, videos and all showing that we can take pearl out of it. Octopus, we have. Aplasia is there. Dentalium is there. Tusk shell. Okay, it looks like an elephant tusk. And we have uh, chiton. Okay, now chiton, you cannot remember. So, at least remember uh, sepia, loligo, octopus and pila. This much you remember. Aplasia also you can remember. See here. So, here what did we study? We studied the first ever thing we studied was this is the second largest. Okay. Second largest phylum. Second largest phylum. And what do they have in the outer shell? Calcareous shell. No, they have calcareous shell outside their layer body. Calcareous shell is present. Now, this calcareous shell, students, is going to help them for the survival, obviously. Now, body is divided into, okay, body is divided into three portions. The head, muscular foot, okay, muscular foot and visceral arm, okay, visceral arm. Now they are telling that uh, on top of the visceral hum, there is a skin like soft spongy layer. Okay, there is a soft spongy layer on top of the visceral hum. Okay, so this is the visceral hum. I just drew and show you. Example, this is not how it looks. Okay, please don't think that this is how it looks. Now, this is the visceral hum. There is a coating. This coating, this soft tissue is called as mantle. Okay, and this is called as hum. This is called as hum. Now, between these two, okay, between these two, there is a cavity called as the mantle cavity. And this mantle cavity is not a small person because this mantle cavity has feather like gills present inside them. Okay, gills present inside them. Now, next thing that they told was near the mouth. Okay, near the mouth, there are some rasping organs. Okay, some rasping organs called radula okay radula which will help them to take the food and everything okay which will help them to take the food and everything radula is present now students are uh, muscular food understood all this you understood outer covering is hard okay the shell shell is going to be hard an example you can remember sepia okay uh, then you can remember octopus at least try to remember three of them. If you cannot remember a lot of them, at least try to remember three of them. Okay, three of them. Uh, then rasping organ we wrote. Anything else did we miss? Mantle cavity we wrote. Muscular foot we wrote. Calcareous shell we wrote. Very nice. Okay, everything we have wrote about phylum mollusca. Okay, next phylum that we have to do. Before that, we'll just drink some water. Phylum Echinodermata. Now look here. These animals have an endoskeleton of calcareous ossicles. What do they have? An endoskeleton. Okay, endo means inside. So inside they have a skeleton called as endoskeleton. 
okay this endoskeleton is made up of calcareous calcareous ossicles okay calcareous ossicles means calcium ossicles hence the name echinodermata comes that is spiny bodies okay spiny bodies uh, all the marine with the organ system level of organization the adult echinoderms are really symmetrical students this is a very important line and i don't know how many times question has come listen carefully adult okay adult echinoderms adult echinoderms are what they have radially symmetrical they are radially symmetrical yes or no no but the larvae of echinoderms okay the larvae of echinoderms larvae of echinoderms is bilaterally symmetric bilaterally symmetric got it the the radially symmetrical is going to be the adult and the larvae is going to be bilaterally symmetrical they are triploblastic and coelomate animals digestive system is complete with a mouth and a anus on the upper so here what is happening complete there is a mouth present on the ventral side okay ventral side and the, the anus is present on the dorsal end okay the most distinctive feature of echinoderms is the presence of water vascular system now water canal system i had taught you in porifera but here they talking about water vascular vascular system which helps in locomotion capture and transport of food and respiration uh, water vascular system is a little more complex system okay luckily you do not have to study that but water canal system you have to study where the water is entering through the pore called ostia and it is going into the cavity called spongocele from spongocele through the osculum it's coming out during this time also they're taking in food and everything okay they're taking in food and everything so which helps in locomotion capture transport of food and respiration and excretory uh, system is absent okay they do not have excretory system so the water canal system only will be helping them slightly for excretion as well sexes are separate reproduction is sexual fertilization is usually external development is indirect with free swimming larvae okay they have free swimming larvae example you have starfish sea urchins cucumber that is sea cucumber and you have brittle star okay all this brittle star starfish and all all of you would have seen at least once in your life okay the beautiful structures which we have studied in a smaller class as an excitement okay as an excitement now students echinodermata what do they have they have endoskeleton okay they have endoskeleton which is made up of calcareous ossicles okay calcareous ossicles now next thing most precious thing or most uh, important thing that you need to remember is adult adult echinoderms okay adult uh, your adult echinoderms okay echinoderms will have radial symmetry radial symmetry and your larval ones okay larval ones will have bilateral symmetry bilateral symmetry got it all of you this is the most important question that is going to come for you so don't ever get confused adult will have radial symmetry larvae will have bilateral symmetry okay larvae will have bilateral symmetry now what other thing about they have spiny bodies okay spiny bodies because of this calcareous ossicles they have spiny body then this is present now they have a complete digestive system where they have mouth okay mouth on the ventral side okay ventral side and they have anus on the dorsal side okay anus on the dorsal side mouth is there anus is there one on the ventral side and one on the dorsal side this will lead to having complete digestive system okay complete digestive system then the most important thing that they have is they do not i mean they have water vascular system okay they have water vascular system 
and this water vascular system is not a very simple system because this is the one who is going to help in food capturing this is the one that is going to help in respiration this is the same fellow who is going to help in capture of the prey and like that multiple multiple thing is done by this one person that is a water vascular system excretory system is absent okay excretory system is absent so water vascular system only will usually help if this such kind of cases come water vascular system only will help them okay so water vascular system would be helping in excretion as well now um example you can remember starfish brittle fish uh, then you can remember cucumber sea cucumber and etc next is hemichordata okay next is hemichordata now this hemichordata from the term you understand that chordata ma'am why is this falling under chordata that kind of confusion can come no look here hemichordata was earlier considered to be uh, to considered as a subphylum under chordata okay so when before the classification happened no like before classifications what happened under chordata only hemichordata used to come but now okay why this happened we will see but now it is placed as a separate phylum under non chordata that is because hemichordata have a rudimentary structure in the collar region called as tomocord okay a structure similar to notochord which people got confused thinking that okay maybe this is the notochord and because notochord is present we will put them under chordates but what happened from chordata it was later pushed to a separate phylum called hemichordata but here the thing is this hemichordata okay hemichordata have a small a, a rudimentary structure which is similar okay a rudimentary structure okay structure in the collar region in the collar region called stomochord okay stomochord so this was the reason why it was before placed under chordate now it is no more placed under chordate it's been separately taken out okay now this phylum consists of a small group of worm like marine animals okay worm worm like small group of worm like marine animals with organ system level of organization they are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic coelomate the body is cylindrical and it is composed of probiosis collar and trunk that is the body of this organism has uh, like how we had head trunk head uh, thorax and abdomen same way how we had head muscular foot and visceral hump here they have proboscis okay what do they have proboscis collar and trunk okay so circulatory system is open type respiration takes place through gills okay excretory organs is proboscis gland so proboscis is the anterior part okay this head region will be called as proboscis then we have collar and then we have trunk so for excretion on the proboscis itself there is a gland called as proboscis gland which will be helping in excretion got it now sexes are separate fertilization is external sexes are separate fertilization is external One minute, students. Okay. So this collar, proboscis, and trunk. Okay, collar, proboscis, and trunk. Yes. then now on the proboscis we have a proboscis gland proboscis gland okay that will help in excretion example balanoglossus and sacloglossus they are like sisters okay balanoglossus and sacloglossus is like sisters okay like that like two people are there okay here okay here you have look here this is the proboscis region or this could be the head region okay head region then this is the collar region which is considered as a trunk region no collar region and here uh, here collar region which is considered as a thorax region and here you have the trunk region okay on the proboscis there is a proboscis gland which is going to do this is going to be the proboscis gland okay proboscis gland that is going to help in excretion okay that is going to help in excretion 
Is it clear? Okay, this is the one that is going to help in excretion. You are proboscis gland. So here we have hemichordata. We understood stomochord was the reason why we put them. They have worm-like marine animals and they are bilaterally symmetrical. Body is divided into proboscis, collar and trunk and uh, the circulatory system is open. Okay, so we will write it here. Okay, here we are going to write hemichordata. Okay, hemichordata was first placed into chordates. was placed into chordata why were they first placed into chordata because they had a rudimentary because they had a rudimentary structure called as stomochord first they had a rudimentary structure called stomochord got it yes They had a rudimentary structure called stomochord and because of which they were first put into chordate and later the stomochord, not too much like, okay, stomochord was there, so we put them there. No, the stomochord was very similar, okay, similar to notochord, very similar to notochord, got it? Very similar to notochord. Now, this hemichordata's body is divided into three regions, okay, head, proboscis, Okay, sorry, <laughs> head is not there, students. Head is proboscis. Okay, proboscis, collar, and trunk. These are the regions. On the proboscis, there is a proboscis gland. Proboscis gland that will help them in excretion. That will help them in excretion. What okay, is that will help them in excretion? Now, circulatory system is open type, and uh, other things are not very important. But these are the most important portions. Okay, these are the most important portion. Why they were placed there? And next thing that one more important thing is they have worm-like marine animals. Okay, worm-like marine animals. Worm-like marine animals in this full category. Worm like marine animals in the full category. Got it? Done? Okay. Worm like marine animals. This is all about hemichordate. Okay. This is all about hemichordata. Now, next we have chordates. Okay. Next we have chordates. Now, before chordates, let me, uh, I think, yes, here. Okay, let's take a small break. The 10 minutes break students, after that we will do chordates.
Yes, students, uh, I'm just uh, checking through NCRT so that we can continue the class. Okay, After that we will directly continue the class. Just give me one minute. <clears throat> yes so we are going to continue the break is over so we have stopped we will start with coordinates right yes we will start with coordinates the two ppds are there students that's why so here we are going to start with coordinates Echinoderms done, hemichordata done, chordates. Now, what is chordates? See, we have already got an introduction in the starting part of this chapter that whichever organism had notochord, right? Whichever, one second, I'll just wear the mic as well. Whichever organism got notochord, all those animals were placed under chordates. And those which did not have a notochord were placed under non chordates. So, we, as of now, till hemichordata, we have studied all the non chordates. From now on, we are going to study the chordates, right? So, chordates are what notochord was present this was the main or this was the basic basic characteristics for doing this classification that notochord is present okay and here notochord is absent okay notochord is absent this was the main classification is this clear uh i think yes Notochord is present, notochord is absent. Now, central nervous system is dorsal, hollow and single. But look at this. In notochords, the central nervous system is going to be ventral. Ventral, that is, dorsal means the one that is exposed to the environment. So, we have dorsal, we have hollow and single one. Here, we have, here, central nervous system was ventral, solid and double. Okay, solid and double. Pharynx perforated by gill slits. Okay, pharynx perforated by gill slits. Gill slits are absent. Okay, gill slits were absent here heart is ventral heart is dorsal okay heart is ventral heart is dorsal here so here you can see everything is basically dorsal ventral differences here here you can see same thing here here it was dorsal here it was ventral so if you know one side okay you can just write the opposite on the other side now example i'll tell you i know chordates that i know notochord is present so obviously for non-chordates notochord will be absent i know that the central nervous system is dorsal hollow and uh, single okay i will write here that this is ventral uh, solid and double Okay, here pharynx perforated. Pharynx had gill slits. Here gill slits were absent. Heart is ventral. Obviously, heart will be dorsal. A post anal tail is present. A post anal tail is absent. Okay, so everything is opposite. If you know one side, you can write the other side easily. So, this is the basic understanding of chordates and uh, non chordates. So, here if I write here, okay, here hemichordates is written, which I have already written in the other PPT. But look here, chordates, okay, chordates. 
if i write about chordates you will you have to immediately understand okay you have to immediately understand chordates are the one who have notochord okay chordates are the one who have notochord yes or no correct so these people have notochord next special thing is uh, they are or uh, our central nervous system is dorsal hollow okay and single okay single but that side everything is double uh, ventral and solid next thing gill slits were present okay gill slits are present then what was it special very very important thing heart is heart is ventral okay there for them heart is dorsal so this is the chordates character okay now when we go further phylum chordata is divided into three categories okay so if i have to understand phylum chordata okay let's say i want to know what is chordata or what are the categories of chordata i need to know that they are divided into euro chordata okay euro chordata or tunicata then cephalo chordata cephalo chordata and then vertebrate okay vertebrate Euro chordata, cephalo chordata, and vertebrata. So chordates were divided into three categories. Let's see which were the three categories and what are they talking about. Okay, now look here. Subphyla, euro chordata, and cephalo chordata are often referred to as proto chordata. So usually euro chordata and cephalo chordata will be referred to. These two portions will be referred to as pro chordata. Okay, proto chordata. Okay, proto chordata. And are exclusively marine. In Eurochordata, notochord is present only in the larval tail. Okay. In Eurochordata, the cord notochord no, is only present in the tail of the larva, while cephalochordata it extends from the head to tail region and it is persistent throughout the life. So in Eurochordata, what is exactly happening? There is a notochord. No doubt there is a notochord, that's why it's falling under chordata. There is a notochord, but the notochord is only present in the larval tail. In adults, this cord notochord is not seen, but it is there in the larval tail. But in cephalochordata, cephalo means head, right? Cephalochordata, the entire notochord is going from head to tail okay from head to tail and they are persistent also it's not like they're disappear disappearing after some time they are persistent throughout the lifetime okay now it extends from head to tail region and it is persistent throughout their life example for eurocordia is acidia uh, salpa and doliolum okay salpa and doliolum that you can remember it like the students they are very sad okay they are very sad because they do not have notochord in their adult state that is uh, salpa Acidia and uh, Dolion. Okay. Now, cephalochordata, you have only one example that is branchi branchiostoma, which is an, uh, or you can tell amphioxus. Okay. Amphioxus which is actually a larval stage. So, next is the subphylums of vertebrata. Possess this notochord during the embryonic period, and then this notochord is replaced by a vertebral column. That is why it is called as vertebrata. So, in adult, thus all the verte vertebrates are chordates, but all chordates are not vertebrates. Agree or not? All vertebrates are chordates because all of us evolved from notochord being into vertebral column. But all the chordates cannot be vertebrates. Why? Because not all the organisms notochord will get developed into vertebral column. Okay, this, is, this can come as an assertion reason question, so it's important. Now, uh, besides the basic chordate characters, vertebrates have ventral muscular heart with two or three, four, two to three, two, three or four chambers, kidneys for excretion. All of you know, no, whatever we have, okay, appendages, fins, limbs, and all this is present. Okay, so here are the categories are there, students. Vertebrata is divided into two categories: the ones which have jaw and the ones which do not have jaw. Okay, egnata. A comes means always remember absent egnata. So here it lacks jaw. Okay, it lacks jaw. Here, gnathostoma, that bears jaw. Okay, now under gnathostoma or the ones which has jaw, it is divided into super classes, that is Pisces and Tetrapoda. Pisces, you have contractors and obstructors, that is your bony fishes and uh, cartilaginous fishes. In Egnata, you have cyclostomata. Okay, only one class called cyclostomata. Here you have uh, cartilaginous fishes, bony fishes. Then you in under tetrapoda, the ones which have limbs. Okay, amphibians, reptiles, apes, and mammals. Such an easy classification. Yes or no? Easy classification. So, 
let's write the classification so we'll start from core data students i'm writing so you understand better okay so core data was divided into three categories okay three categories first one was called as euro core data euro core data okay next one is called as cephalo core data cephalo core data and third one is called as vertebrata okay you can remember this one's example let's use another color for example as sad okay that is salpa acidia and doliolo okay doliolo got it now cephalo data what happens here students uh this things you have to write tail is only i mean sorry <laughs> you notochord is only present in the tail region here tail has notochord okay and what tail has larval tail larval tail because adults do not have here notochord is from head to tail there is notochord and that notochord is persistent as well okay notochord is persistent as well okay persistent as well now cephalochordata's examples you can remember branchiostoma i'm not writing it here now vertebrata is divided into two categories okay vertebrata is divided into egnatha okay that is without jaws and nathostoma Nato stomata. That is Egnata. We have only one class called as Cyclostomata. Here we have again two categories. Okay, we have again two categories as spices. Spices, no spices. Okay, and tetrapoda. This category was done on the basis of limbs and if they have legs or if they have fins. Okay. If they have fins, they were this, and if they have legs, they were this. Okay, so under this again category scape. So this is the basic classification. So let's see what is class cyclostomata has to say to us. Okay, class cyclostomata, that is all living members of class cyclostomata are ectoparasite. I already told you ectoparasite means they live outside, and on whom do they live? On some fishes. And some of my students have seen this because they you people would have watched videos okay you would have watched videos where you can see you know on shark there are some people stuck like that you can see you know that is what this is okay one second okay they have uh, an elongated body bearing 6 to 15 okay they have an elongated body bearing 6 to 15 pairs of gill slits Okay, 6 to 15 pairs of gill slits for respiration. Cyclostomes have a sucking and a circular mouth without jaws. That is the reason why we have a category yes or no that they do not have jaws but they have circular mouth. Okay, their body is devoid of scales. Why their body is devoid of scales? Because they are ectoparasite. They live on fishes. If they have scales, they are going to hurt the fishes and the fishes are going to know that their body has something. So, this is the fish. Okay, this is the fish. On the fish, what do we see? Anything. An ectoparasite. Okay, an ectoparasite will be there like this. Let's say, like this one organism is there. Or what two, one organism is there. What those organism is going to have? Hmm? This organism is going to stay without, they do not have any scales. Okay, and pairs of fins are going to be there. Okay, pair of fins are going to be there. Cranium and vertebral column are cartilaginous. Very, very important. Cranium, that is a brain and the vertebral column, both are cartilaginous soft so they are basically like those spongy people okay nothing is bony everything is spongy spongy okay circulation is a close type cyclostomes are marine but migrate for swamp uh, swamping to fresh water after swamping within few days they will die the larva will come back again alone by itself the larva after metamorphosis return to the ocean so, so very sad story students yes or no very sad story One second. Okay. 
Yes. Okay, done. Okay, done. Okay, yes. So, what are the things about them? They have elongated body wearing 6 to 15 gill slits. Okay, 6 to 15 gill slits they have. Okay, gill slits they have. Next, what do they have, students? They have without jaws, they have mouth. Then they are devoid of scales. They have no scales. Okay, and paired fins they have. Paired fins. Cranium vertebral column. Okay, cranium and vertebral column is cartilaginous. Cartilaginous. And these people, what do they do? They migrate from marine to freshwater. They migrate for spawning. And after that, they'll die. That they'll die and the larva will do metamorphosis and come back. Okay. Example is petromycin and mycine. Okay. Petromyzo and mycine. Okay. Lamp, uh, lamprey and hagfish. Hagfish name you have to remember because most of the time they will ask you hagfish. They will not ask you mycine every time. They might ask you hagfish. Okay. I hope that is clear. Cyclostomida. Now, students, this whole chapter is about you have to learn. Like what you tell you have to buy hard. You have to remember. That is the main process. Okay. Understanding is very little. See. Now, class contractor. This is your cartilaginous fishes. This come under uh, superclass Pisces because they have fins. Okay. There are marine animals with streamlined body. Okay. They have streamlined body and have cartilaginous endoskeleton. Here also they have cartilage. That's why they are called cartilaginous fish. Streamline means what? Like this. So that it will help them to move forward, right? Move forward in water. The, it will be able to cut the water currents and go forward. Now, mouth is located. Okay. Mouth is located ventrally. Mouth is located ventrally. Front portion. Front portion mouth is located. Now, notochord is persistent throughout the life. Gill slits are separate and without operculum. Now, students, I don't know how many of you consume fishes like, you know, on a regular basis. All of you would have seen this is a normal fish that we buy. Okay. This is the normal fish we buy. This looks little abnormal, but yeah. Let's say this is the eyes. In backside, no students, here, there is going to be one structure like this. Yes or no? One structure like this. Under this, gill slits will be there. This structure is called as operculum, which you see in bony fishes. You do not see it in cartilaginous fishes. Okay, operculum. Okay, this operculum. So here, look here, slits are separate without an operculum. There is a gill cover. So gills will be there to cover that there is an operculum that will be present. The skin is tough, containing minute placoid scales. Okay, small, small scales are there in this people. Small, small scales are there in this people. Got it? Small scales are there. That is called as placoid scales. So scales have different different cycloid, placoid, which uh, you do not have to study now. So just remember they have placoid scales. Okay, teeth are modified placoid scales, which are backwardly directed. Their jaws are very very powerful. These animals are predaceous due to the absence of air bladder. They have to swim constantly to avoid sinking. Students very sad. They have to keep swimming. Okay, they do not have no air bladder. These people have no air bladder. So, have you seen a shark who is taking rest? You will not see a shark who is taking rest. You will always see them swim, swim, swim. Because the moment they stop swimming, they will start sinking down. Okay. Until they want to sleep, they will not sink. Okay. Now, next thing. Heart is two-chambered. Okay. Heart is two-chambered. I hope all of you know that fish heart is two-chambered. One auricle will be there. So, if this is the heart, this is how I draw the heart of the fish all the time. Okay. Heart, this is auricle, this is ventricle, this is sinus arterios, cornus, ar cornus, sorry, sinus venosus and cornus arterios. Okay, these are accessory organs to support this chambers. Okay, two chambers, some of them have electric organ. This is very important. Some of the cartilaginous fishes have electric organ and some possesses poisonous sting. Okay, like your trigon. All of you have seen, no trigon like this. That one has poisonous sting. That's why people tell, don't touch it. Even though it looks very different, you have a tendency to touch it. Don't touch it because they are, they'll immediately stink. Okay, and they are deadly. They are cold-blooded. That is poikilotherm. They'll be able to regulate their body temperature with the environment. Now, outside it's cold, they will regulate themselves. Outside it's hot. We cannot do that. Our body temperature is constant no matter however the climate is going outside. Okay, they lack, uh, they lack capacity to regulate. They lack capacity to regulate their body temperature. Uh, so, that is students, they cannot maintain a constant temperature is what they are trying to say. Okay, otherwise they will be able to, what it is, outside temperature will keep 
according to that they'll have to change they cannot maintain the regular temperature okay so sexes are separate in male pelvic fins okay bare claspers very important pelvic fins bare claspers they have internal fertilization and many of them are viviparous okay so dogfish you can remember sawfish stingray great white shark okay great white shark you can remember you have to know the scientific names otherwise it will be little difficult okay otherwise it will be little difficult got it shallow okay so they have electric organs very important and these electric organs actually they tell that this electric organs help them to navigate okay that's the use of this electric organs otherwise you can think no ma'am why have they given an electric organ this is for them to navigate okay navigate so they'll be able to move between the water currents and go between the storms and everything so that navigation is done by this electric organs they have poisonous stings and their poikilotherms and also the pelvic fins in male have claspers okay this is what you have to remember so here we will just write a kutti summary of this okay contact this they are first of all you should write they are cartilaginous okay cartilaginous fishes cartilaginous fishes now contract is the first thing that you know is their body is made up of endoskeleton is cartilage okay endoskeleton is made up of cartilage second thing very important they have streamlined body okay streamlined body streamlined body then we should remember that they have streamlined body they have small okay small placoid scales small placoid scales and remember that these placoid scales have got modified to form teeth as well which are backwards okay backwards now remember mouth is ventral okay mouth is present ventrally ventral got it then what else students they do not have no operculum okay no operculum to protect the gill slits gill slits are separate then about uh, the just now what we studied they have no air bladder as well so they have to keep floating okay no air bladder as well the next thing is on the pelvic fins okay on the pelvic fins they have claspers claspers this is in males yes or no clear okay so no operculum no air bladder pelvic fins and uh, electric organ also will write off okay even though i told it once again write the okay they have electric organ and this electric organ is to navigate okay electric organ is to navigate and the next thing is that they have poisonous stink not everyone students uh, some of the organisms have poisonous stings that will help them to uh, kill the uh, predator as well as the prey next is bony fishes bony fishes we are all similar because this is what we consume okay it includes both marine and fresh water we consume the fresh water fishes okay which is bony endoskeleton that's the bone that we remove in the middle no? that those bony structures again body is going to be streamlined anything under water is going to be streamlined so that they can cut the water currents okay mouth is mostly terminal you would have seen the no? fishes here the mouth will come now all of us would have drawn a fish in the small age you know like this we would have drawn the fish yes or no like this will run and here the mouth will come okay terminal now they have four pairs of four pairs of gills which are covered by an operculum this is what i told you to protect the gills they have an operculum okay so when they are peeling the fish off or they're cleaning the fish they'll remove the operculum first okay skin is covered by cycloid or stenoid scale so i told you three types of scales are there we can call it cycloid mainly like cycloid and placoid scale placoid is a smaller one which you see it in the cartilage in fish but they're very sharp here these are cycloid scales like this like this scales remember all of us have drawn knowingly or unknowingly in a fish diagram that is this air bladder is pre present with uh, pre is present with which regulates buoyancy okay that's the reason they do not have to keep swimming all the time okay now heart is two chambered as i told you same thing there one auricle one ventricle and then two accessory organs also are there chambers are there which will help them for the entire thing now heart is two chambered they are cold blooded animals sexes are separate fertilization is usually ex ex external they are mostly oviparous and its development is indirect okay so in marine you can remember roho okay 
Labio, then you can remember hippocampus, which is seahorse, cutla, these are the fishes that we consume. Okay, beta fish, which is very trending nowadays, fighting fish. Uh, you, all of you would have seen, you know, they have like this beautiful tails. Okay, different, different, different colors. They have like this tails. Now, it is sold a lot. During the COVID time, it has become like the only fish that people wanted to buy. Okay, the only fish that people wanted to buy were beta fishes. Now, now I don't know if they have that much market. Okay, but yeah, they used to be like all time stars so these are bony fishes so when you're writing about bony fishes and cartilaginous fishes first thing you write is about their endoskeleton okay endoskeleton is bony okay endoskeleton is bony and whatever you wrote no there you write s here okay whatever you wrote no there you'll write s here like they have operculum okay operculum present Operculum present, then air bladder present. Okay, air bladder present. Then what students? Then uh, they are streamlined body, same thing, chambers, heart is two chambered. Okay, that you will study in body fluids and circulation. Heart is two chambered. Okay. Uh, then uh, bones all of you know that bony fishes are there then uh, important cycloid they have cycloid we call it stenoid scales okay stenoid scales present all over their body okay then they have air bladder so they do not have to float all the time then they do not have this poisonous uh, sting or they do not have this electric organs or any of it then that's it okay that's it did we miss something i think i missed something Buoyancy I wrote, cold blooded, okay, other things are normal. They were viviparous, these people are oviparous, okay. These are oviparous, those are viviparous. Now, these people are the ones which are generally seen both marine and freshwater. We consume the freshwater, we consume the freshwater ones, and that is going to be your rohu, katla. Then the showcase ones, right? Like the pet ones are your beta fish. Okay, beta fish. Then you can remember hippocampus, that is your seahorse. Okay, hippocampus, which is your seahorse. Okay, this is your general. Uh, so, students, so far we have done, uh, we have done all the spices. Spices we have done. Now we are only red, left with tetrapods. Okay, tetrapods are those amphibians, reptiles, birds, all that. So that we, I will do it in very short period of time. Okay, it will not require a lot of time at all. So this is it for today. So today we completed so much. So we completed all the phylums. Okay, I'll just write it here in one of the empty sheets yes okay no empty sheets yes here there is an empty sheet so so today we completed so yesterday last class we had completed porifera cylindrate and platy hel uh, sorry tenophora today we completed platy helminths okay platy helminths we completed we completed ascalmins yes then we completed analida okay arthropoda arthropoda Echinodermata, okay, Echinodermata, then Hemichordata, okay, Hemichordata, then we did Chordates, under Chordates we did Euro, Cephalo, Cephalo and Vertebrata, okay, under Vertebrata we did Ignata and Nathostoma. Stomata. Okay, Nathostomata. So here this we haven't done. And then Ignata, you did Cyclostoma. Stomata. Cyclostomata. Then here we did Pisces. Under Pisces we did Bony and Cartilaginous. Okay, Bony and Cartilaginous. Yes. So this is how much we have done okay today's class we have done now we are only left with one thing which is tetrapoda i don't think you people even need it because it's about so many simple things right the day-to-day -day things that we learn which we have learned for so many years of our life that is your amphibians okay they live both on land and water then reptiles names you have to remember here okay that is the crucial part here 
reptiles are there then apes your birds and then last mammals here what is the crucial part especially in bird students you have to know the scientific names that's the biggest task okay scientific name is the biggest task got it so if you know the scientific names then we are sorted okay if you don't know the scientific name then it will might be a task so that scientific names if you study then you are done and dusted good to go so today we completed so many phylums okay so many phylums right so many phylums done and so much information as well today we finished so we are coming to end of this chapter i will think about this tetrapod part because it's very small it will take me hardly like 20 minutes to finish it so there's no point of putting a video again so let's see what we can do about it if you all of you can read it alone i'm sure all of you can read it alone then we will not do this portion at all okay so see you all in next class students thank you so much for joining i hope the session was really helpful and yes i have tried to fix the mic issues and as much as possible from my end so that was the thing what i was doing in the middle so yes see you all in next class tata bye bye